This book is great. We're talking about Chalmers. I fairly recently spoke with um, uh, C.N. Wilborn, Nick Wilborn, about uh, Chalmers and some of his uh, thoughts about uh, diaconal ministry and ministry to the poor. That was based on a uh, on a um, journal article in the Confessional Presbyterian Journal. And I know you touch on some of that historically here, uh, mm-hmm. but we're speaking about a biography. And you previously also had written a, a bite-sized biography on Chalmers. I'd like to start just by asking you perhaps how those two relate to one another, but even before that, asking you how you became interested in, in Chalmers and what brought you to, to write these volumes. Thank you. It's good to be here again. Um, I grew up in the Toronto congregation uh, uh, in Canada of the Free Church of Scotland. Uh, my family and I started going there when I was a teenager, and it was where I was nurtured in the faith. I uh, developed a early interest in history, and because of the church's connections with Scotland, started doing a little bit of reading on Chalmers and had some idea of who he was and the role that he had played in church history. Um, One of the impetus for this book came about in 1996. Um, My wife and son and I were in Scotland. I had been sent over as a commissioner to the Free Church General Assembly. And we arrived in Edinburgh uh, early in the morning and uh, as jet lagged as we were, uh, decided that we would do one of the basic tourist mm. uh, bus tours around just to orient ourselves to Edinburgh. Yeah. And uh, the tour uh, started uh, at the top of the Royal Mile, where Edinburgh Castle is, and sort of worked its way down the Royal Mile toward uh, Holyrood Palace. Uh, About halfway down the Royal Mile is St. Giles Cathedral, which was a central place in uh, the Reformation in Scotland. And across the street from St. Giles Cathedral is John Knox's house. And through my jet lag brain, I heard the 20-something tour guide say, we're passing St. Giles Cathedral and John Knox's house. John Knox was responsible for religious intolerance and the subjugation of <laughs> women in Scottish history. Ooh. And I kind of woke up <laughs> thought, oh, this is interesting. And I, I, I sort of, Linda kind of, my wife Linda kind of grabbed my hand so that I wouldn't <laughs> go on my crutches to go after the tour guide. Um, <laughs> so, the tour got, so the tour continued. And we passed into the area of Edinburgh called Newtown. And in Newtown, there is a large statue of Thomas Chalmers. And so as we're passing the statue, I put my hand up and asked the tour guide who the statue was of. And her response was, some dead white guy. (laughs) And I thought to myself, wow, this is kind of a sad commentary on the knowledge of Scottish history not just ecclesiastical history, but Scottish history. Uh, And it's not that long ago. Like it's, you know, a couple hundred years ago. So at that point I thought, you know, I think I need to do some work myself and um, answer the question, who who was Thomas Chalmers? Um, There has been uh, some attention paid to Thomas Chalmers over the years. Uh, There's one fairly large scholarly biography of Chalmers, um, which is rich in detail. Uh, However, I don't think uh, the author of that particular volume um, really understands or or at least sympathize with Chalmers' evangelical piety. Mm. And so I wanted to uh, try and reflect who he was and answer the question why he matters. Uh, So I was asked by uh, Evangelical Press a number of years ago 
to contribute a very brief biography in their bite size series on Chalmers, which I did. And then they came back to me and asked me to expand that. And that uh, is uh, what the Chief Scottish Man book is. So it's an expansion of the bite size biography. What I did was. I went back into my manuscript. I wrote uh, an entirely new chapter on his preaching and his leadership in the church. And then I expanded uh, a number of the other chapters as well. Um, And it actually gave me an opportunity to rethink uh, some of the things that, some of the conclusions I'd arrived at in the initial book. Not that I came to majorly different conclusions, but it did give me an opportunity to flush some things out that sure. uh, I thought needed to be said. And the reality is that Chalmers had a very, very rich life. And um, one one could say a whole lot more about him than I was able to do even within the compass of the, of the larger book. 